By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have another game from you played in Arnhem at the Camel Trophy. Um, and we are looking at Yup, who's playing on the left with Ernem on Ice against uh, Thomas, a new player in the scene who's playing with uh, Blue Red Counterburn. And there we go, a Sol Ring. And also a good start from Yup there. And there is the famous Ice Storm, so that's why it's not Ernem Geddon, but Ernem on Ice, because he replaced the Ice Storms with the Armageddons. And let's see if he made any more tweaks in the deck. There is a City of Brass. And there is a Flying Man from Thomas. Counterburn, usually pretty aggressive deck. And uh, let's see the differences maybe in the build. And there's an aggressive Fireball of three points. We don't see uh, that much direct damage actually in a lot of old school plays and that surprises me and there's a chain lightning but we definitely some see some direct damage in this game so Yup is down to 12 live already and there's that flying man and there's an Ernie on the battlefield 4-5 Arabian Knights and in the upkeep it needs to give forest walk to a creature of the opponent in this case, not very relevant. There's another Lightning Bolt from Thomas, so Yup is down to 9. Uh, and there is another Flying Man. And I think the counter indicates which Flying Man has Force Walk. In this case, he's attacking. It's interesting that Thomas didn't attack with the Flying Man uh, the other turn. Something I definitely would have done. He's doing it now, swinging in with both. So he's going down to 7. I think it's important that Thomas tries to finish this game as fast as possible because on the long run he is definitely not going to win this game but maybe with his direct damage he can pull through I mean Yup is on seven now he's tapping both his city of brass bring him down to five and that's a brain geyser so that's going to help him and you see him now tapping another land and he's doing that because he wants one white mana available for a swords to plowsiers um, so there he is digging and I think he's drawing six cards or seven um, he wants to draw Diamond Valley, but he already played a land. I'm not sure. And there, I've slow mo this because this is an important part of the match. He's playing a Swords on uh, one of the Flying Men, and Thomas is countering the Swords. He shouldn't have done that because he actually has a Psy Blast in his hand. So don't counter. Uh, let your Flying Man die, and then you can ex deal 4 damage exactly and I think this is a turning point in the game because now the Diamond Valley is on the field Diamond Valley is from Arabian Nights you can tap to sack a creature and you gain life equal to its I believe its power um, so that means that he can now at any time sack his his Ernie uh, his Ernie Jin and he can gain life so I think this is a huge error uh, on the part here of, of Thomas which is I mean it's it's I can understand that you do it because you have a counter spell. You want to protect your flying man. You know your opponent doesn't have a lot of flying. Uh, I haven't seen a single Sarah Angel, so you think I have to protect my flying man and I'm going to use that to kill my opponent. But there was no need. Um, if you would have let the flying man die, you would have gone to four and he could have killed him with the side blast. But okay, um, let's look at the remainder of the game. So he's already used his Diamond Valley to second Ernie. Um, he's attacking now with both Flying Man and Yup is 2-6, so he's actually gaining life. And there's also that uh, Preacher there on the board for Yup that uh, he can now activate. So at Summoning Sickness before, now he can activate. Card from the Dark, you can tap to take over a creature of the opponent, and the opponent can choose. In this case, there are two uh, Flying Men. And that's the game. That's, so that's how quickly it can go. So Thomas could have won this game, um, but he didn't, so it's... 1-4 for, for Yup, 1-0 for the Ernie on Ice deck. I wonder what the uh, Blue Red Counterburn deck can do in the second game, because it could have won the first one. And that's interesting there. Do I see a Flash Fires? That means that he boarded that in from the sideboard. And it looks like because he did a Scry 1, so he took a Mulligan, choosing to keep his hand off 6. And the second turn, already able to counter because of that Volcanic Island. And let's see what Yup's doing. Playing a Soul Ring. And then tapping and playing an Ice Storm, and that's uh, 
The deck is known for doing that. You want to play that Ice Storm, preferably turn number two, uh, to get your opponent as quickly as possible and get ahead of that mana uh, curve. So there is a City of Brass and there's a Mox. So already five, six mana available for Yup there and there's a Flash Fires. And I think that's a great play there, taking two lands away and getting that mana advantage back. But there's the Ice Storm for the second time and this time there's no counter spell because Thomas is tapped out. So there goes the beautiful Volcanic Island. There's a Chain Lightning and Yup is going down to 17. Not a big problem yet there. And there's a second city of brass and there's the attack by the factory. So that means 18. And there's a blood moon and it looks like an interesting hand there. Thomas has um, the time twister in hand and a counter spell. But because that volcanic island got ice stormed, he cannot use the counter spell. And obviously an ideal scenario would be for him now to counter this Urnum Jin, but he can't because he lost that volcanic island because that would have enabled him um, to play out uh, this last card and then play out the uh, Time Twister. Now in this case it's interesting, this, this past turn that he chooses not to play the Time Twister, he wants to keep his counter spell, but he has to pay for that choice because um, he's now getting attacked for six and he's drawing a Wheel of Fortune that's very unfortunate when you already have a Time Twister in hand. Um, so I guess the best thing to do here is just to play the Time Twister, just to get a new hand. Um, and that's exactly what he does. He's playing the Time Twister. And both players are going to pull seven new cards. And that is what I find um, difficult with the Counter Burn deck, especially when you're playing against Urnum Jins that have five toughness. So they are hard to get rid of. If you play with, for instance, Black where you have a Terror, or you play with um, with White where you have a Swords to Plows here, so you can easily take them away. Um, but not with uh, with blue red. You would need like a double double bolt or a big fireball, or it's just a hassle to get rid of a, a four or five creature. There's a double flying man coming, um, and one of the flying man is getting a forest walk from the Urnum Jin, so that's why the dice is on there. And let's see, they're counting their cards, playing. As Havana, taking a damage from the city, going to 15, that's not a problem. And there's a Sarah Angel. So we didn't see a Sarah Angel in the first game, but now there's a Sarah Angel. Um, and that means that the Urnums are not as powerful. And this is interesting here. We see a good double block from Thomas and then a Lightning Bolt. So this is what I talked about. It takes him three cards to get rid of one creature. And that is definitely a weakness of the deck. And also not being able to counter that Sarah um, and now I, I do see a fireball in his hand, so he's probably going to use a fireball on the Sarah. I still got 12 life. Ooh, there's a recall. That's never nice to see a recall being used against you. Always at that end step where you pass turn and your opponent says, Oh no, I have one thing to do on my end step. And he taps a blue mana and you know, oh, there's a recall. Ugh, yuck. Anyway, there is a strip mine here, not being used, but well, being used for mana, not being used to strip anything. And another Ernie on the board. And is there a counter spell? Is that possible? And I believe there's a counter spell, but he can tap enough mana. There's a power sink there. Um, Thomas had to try. He knows that, you know, um, with two creatures on the board, I'm probably not going to win this, but he had to try. And there's probably now the fireball. I mean, he has to play the fireball, right? He's playing a double fireball, can he? I don't think he can. I don't think he has enough mana to do that. And remember, with fireball, they have to be divided equally. So he can only get rid of one creature. So he takes, uh, he chooses the biggest creature, which makes sense. But it does mean that he'll go down to four, or maybe if he activate his factory, uh, he'll go down to, um, to two. So if you ch chooses to activate his factory here. Oh no, he can of course, because there's a blood moon on the field. So sorry, forgot that he only has mountains there. Playing a chaos orb and playing an ice storm. Why not? And there's another card. Unfortunately, I can't see it because of the glare. It's a little bit frustrating. And there is a flip. Thanks to the flip, we can now see that it's actually a flying man 
and there's the flip in slow-mo and it's it's a hit there so the flying man is gone that means there's no blocker for the sarah angel and that's that's game that's basically game and uh Yoop wins here with this earn on ice deck two to zero but man look back at the game number one thomas you could have won that one and then it would have been a one one and you know who knows with a little bit of luck with a little bit of uh of direct damage there maybe you could have pulled in that uh second game anyway thank you for watching this episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and see you next time <laughs>